welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this challenge we have a two questions will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so let's look at the question so here we have a one class and we have a three methods right we have a two sum method and we have a one main method so let's try to execute the main method step by step and we will see are we getting any compilation error or what will be the output we are getting so first of all we don't see any error in the main method definition right so this line will compile successfully let's go to the next line so in the next line we are trying to create the object of question one class right but you can see here we are missing the new keyword so here we are getting the compilation error so now try to pause the video and try to think what will be the error message we will get so are we getting the error that you are missing the new keyword so definitely no right so compiler will think that we want to call the method with the name question one right and compiler will not able to find the question one method inside this class so compiler will give you the error saying that unable to find the method with the name question one right perfect let's try to check the next line as well so here we are trying to call the sum method of question one class right and we are passing the two integer argument so here we have a two sum method so which method will get call here first or second so here java will get confused because by just changing the return type java will not able to decide that which method are we calling here so we might have to call the first method or we might have to call the second method right so there is a ambiguity here and whenever there is ambiguity in java you will get the compilation error so java will give you the error that these two methods are duplicate by just changing the return type you can't differentiate two methods right so these methods are duplicate methods so java will allow you to have a two different methods with the same name in a class if you meet the one of the two condition so either you have to change the number of parameter or you have to change the type of parameter okay so consider this two method you can pass the two parameter here or you can pass the one parameter here right then java will not consider this two method as a duplicate method or you can change the type of parameter so you can pass integer integer and double double right or you can pass integer double and double integer right then java will not give you the error because java will able to understand which method we have to call based on the argument we are passing so if we are passing integer double it will call this method if we are passing the double integer it will call this method right and this concept is called the method overloading perfect i hope you are clear with this challenge now welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this challenge we have a two question will this code compile if yes what will be the output so let's look at the question so inside this question we have a two class one is the test and one is the question 6 right inside the test class we have a one instance variable which is count right we have a constructor and inside the constructor we are incrementing the count variable by 1 and we have a print number method where we are printing the value of count perfect so we don't have any compilation error inside the test class right let's look at the question 6 so inside the question 6 we have a main method and inside the main method we are creating the three object of this test class right so this looks fine no compilation error next we are calling the print number method from each object so again we don't have any error here so we don't have any error inside the question 6 as well right so basically we don't have any compilation error inside this code perfect so let's try to check the output so whenever we execute the program java will execute the statement we are writing inside the main method so let's look at the first statement so when we are executing the first statement we are trying to create the object of test class that is the d1 right so if you look at the structure of the memory when we are executing the first statement it will create the object d1 in the memory 
and this object will have a one copy of a variable which is the count right because count is a instance variable so each object will have a separate copy for this count right and by default value for this count is zero because it's an instance variable so we don't have to initialize the instance variable it will be having a default value so integer will have a zero and if we have a string then it will be having a null perfect but you can see whenever we execute the first statement we are calling the constructor right and inside the constructor we are incrementing the value of count by one so finally after execution of the first statement the value of count will be one perfect so this is the picture of the memory after execution of the first statement so same thing will happen after execution of the second statement as well right it will create the d2 in the memory and d2 also will have a one copy of a count variable right because count is an instance variable and when we call the constructor we are incrementing the value of count by one so now count value will be one perfect so same thing will happen when we execute the third line it will create a d3 in the memory and d3 also will have copy of a count variable so we have a count variable and also we are incrementing the value of count by one in the constructor so d3 also will have a count variable which has a value one perfect so this is the picture of the memory after execution of the first three statement after this using each object we are calling the print number method right so when we are calling the d1 dot print number it will print the value of count so what will be the value of count inside the d1 object okay so it's a one so it will print the one into the output right because we are using d1 so it will check the value of count from d1 object which is the one so it will print the one into the output right when we execute the second print number it will check the count value from d2 object right because who is calling this print number method it's a d2 so it will print the count value from d2 and it's also one so it will be one similarly in the d3 dot print number it will print the value of count from d3 so it's a one right so finally output will be one 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 because we have a count variable is an instance variable so each object will have a separate copy for the count variable so that is why we will get the output one 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 perfect i hope you are clear with this challenge so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments regarding this video try to write down into the comment section Thanks everyone and we'll see you into the next video. Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this challenge we have a two question. Will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? So this question is based on the dynamic polymorphism. So before we jump into this question, let's try to understand the concept of dynamic polymorphism. So consider an example, forget about Java, just try to think the real time scenario. Let's say we have a one Sony TV and one LG TV. Sony TV has a four channel, one, two, three, four, and LG TV has a six channel, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have a Sony TV remote. And inside the Sony TV remote, we have a four keys, one, two, three, four. And using this remote control, we can able to access any of this channel. We can press one and we can able to change it to the channel number one. Similarly, inside the LG TV remote, we have a six button, right? So using this six button, we can able to change the six channel. Perfect. So let's try to relate with Java. Okay. So consider that Sony TV is a parent class. Okay. So TV is a class. Okay. So Sony TV is a parent class and it has a four method one, two, three, four and LG TV is a child class, right? It has a six method one, two, three, four, five, six. So this method is nothing. It's a parent class method, but LG TV is overriding it. So these are the parent class method only, but here we are doing the overriding and this two is actually LG TV class method, right? So LG TV added the some more method inside the child class which is the 5 and 6 right consider that we have a remote control so remote control is nothing it's an object so when we create a object of sony tv it's a remote control of sony tv and when we create a object of lg tv it's a remote control of lg tv right 
perfect let's try to understand the different scenario here so you can see here let's say using the remote control of sony tv can we access channels of sony tv yes we can easily access right we have a four button in the remote control and we have a four channel right we can press any button and we can change any channel perfect consider that lg tv remote if we are using in lg tv can we able to access all the channels of lg tv yes we have a six button and we can able to access all the channels of lg tv now consider the two tricky scenario so you can see these are the tricky scenario let's use the sony tv remote and let's try to change the channel of lg tv right what will happen so you can see using the sony tv remote we have a four buttons right and here we have a six channels so we can able to access one two three four channels in the lg tv but we will not able to access five and six using sony tv remote because we don't have a five and six button into the sony tv remote right and if we use the lg tv remote to access the sony tv channel what will happen so you can see here we have a six buttons but here we have a only four channels right so here we are not getting the idea if user will press five and six what will happen because we don't have a channel five and six user has a flexibility to press five and six but here we don't have a channel right so java will get confused that if user will press five and six what i have to do right so there is a ambiguity and when there is a ambiguity java will give you the compilation error so you can't use child class remote control to access the parent class channel right you can't use child class remote control to access the parent class channel now let's try to understand the java concept here so using this example we can have a four possible combination so you can see we are just using the parent class reference and parent class object right that means tv is a parent class and remote control is also from parent class okay so there is no error right using this object we can able to call any of the method of this class right so there is no problem with this again there is no problem with this one as well because you can see using lg tv remote control we can able to access any channel from lg tv right so this is very easy so let's look at this two tricky scenario so we are using the sony tv remote control okay that means sony tv remote control and we want to access the lg tv channel right so using this remote using this object we can call all the methods of lg tv which is overridden from the parent class right you can see using the sony tv remote control we can able to access the lg tv channel but only those channel which is available in the sony tv class so using this object you can able to call only 1 2 3 4 but it will call the lg tv channel right and let's look at the fourth one so fourth one we are just trying to use the lg tv remote which is this one and we want to change the sony tv channel which is here so this will give you compilation error because java will get confused here so you have to understand this four important things so let's get back to the question again so here you can see we have a vehicle class which is the parent class which has a method drive we have a car class which is extending the vehicle class right so this is the parent class and this is the child class and car class is actually overriding the drive method right perfect now inside the main method which combination we are using and you can see child class remote control right and parent class object right so lg tv was child class and sony tv was parent class right so lg tv remote control which has a six key and we want to access the sony tv channel so this combination will give you the compilation error because in the child class we have a more number of methods right so in the child class remote control or child class reference we have a more buttons and we don't have a sufficient channel inside the parent class right so java will get confused and it will be a ambiguity so this combination will give you the compilation error right so this question will give you the compilation error perfect so i hope you are clear with the dynamic polymorphism and also why this question will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile 
If yes, then what will be the output? So first of all, let's check for the compilation error. So here we have a one class vehicle. Inside that we have a drive method and inside that we are printing the driving vehicle. So there is no compilation error in this class. After that, we have a car class which is extending the vehicle. So car is a child class, vehicle is the parent class. And inside the car class, we have a two method. One is the drive and one is the play music. So drive method is nothing. It's a overridden method of the parent class, right? So car class is overriding the drive method of parent class. And play music method, it's additionally added by the child class. Perfect. So there is no error in this class as well. And we have another class, which is the question four. Inside that we have a main method. And inside the main method, we have a three statement. And you can see here, this is the example of dynamic polymorphism. So here we are using the parent class reference and we are creating the object of the child class. And using parent class reference, we are calling the drive method and play music method. So this program is based on the dynamic polymorphism. If you haven't watched the video of dynamic polymorphism, first of all, try to watch it. You will find out the link in the description. Once you understand the dynamic polymorphism concept, this question will be very clear to you. So let's understand this using dynamic polymorphism example. So in the dynamic polymorphism example, we had a two class. One is the Sony TV and one is the LG TV. So Sony TV, we were considering as a parent class and LG TV is our child class. So you can relate this example with this example. You can say vehicle is a parent class. So vehicle is actually Sony TV and car is a child class. So you can consider it as a LG TV. So inside the vehicle, we have a one method, which is drive. So inside the Sony TV, we have a one channel and inside the LG TV, we have a two channel one and two. So LG TV is overriding the one method from the Sony TV class and the second is actually added by the LG TV. Excellent. So let's try to understand this case now. So you can see we are using the reference of the parent class. That means we are using the remote control of the parent class, which is the Sony TV remote. And whenever we are using the parent class reference or Sony TV remote, it has a one button that is the one because inside that we have a one channel. So Sony TV remote has a only one button. So using this remote control, we try to access the channel from the child class. That means using this remote control, we try to access the channel of LG TV, right? And we can see that inside this remote control, we have a one button. So when we press first button, we can able to change the first channel. We don't have a second channel in the Sony TV remote. So we will not able to access the second channel. And the channel we can able to access in the LG TV is the channel which is overridden from the parent class. So we cannot able to access the channel which is added by the child class or LG TV. So you can see using V, which method we can able to access. So we can able to access the drive method because it's available into the parent class. So this is valid. And when we run this program, it will print the driving car because we are accessing the methods of car class, right? Child class. So it will print driving car instead of driving vehicle. Perfect. And you can see V dot play music. So play music is additionally added by the car class, which is not available in the parent class. So we will not able to access the second channel using the parent class remote control or parent class reference. So this will give you the compilation error. So this question will give you the compilation error that play music method is not available with the parent class reference. Perfect. So using parent class reference or parent class remote control, we can able to access all the methods of child class, which is available in the parent class. So we cannot access the methods of child class, which is aided by child class. So two is specifically added by LG TV. So we will not able to access two using parent class reference. Okay. I hope you are clear now why this question will give you the compilation error. Welcome to the Java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that, you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question, we have to check, will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? 
so this question is very important because in a single question we are covering so many important java concept so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so we have a one class here vehicle inside that we have a two methods and one variable so variable is a instance variable and we have a two method one is a static and one is the instance method so in vehicle class we don't have any compilation error let's try to check the car class so car class is actually extending the vehicle class and inside the car class as well we have a one instance variable we have a one static method and we have a one instance method so basically car class has everything that parent class has so we can see that inside the car class as well we cannot see any compilation error let's try to check the question 5 class so inside that we have a main method and first of all we are taking the reference of parent class and we are creating the object of the child class so this is the example of dynamic polymorphism using the parent class reference we are trying to access the drive method we are trying to access the res method and we are trying to access the instance variable so in the question 5 class also we cannot see any compilation error right now we have to understand what will be the output of this drive method res method and the max speed so first of all we need to understand which are the methods in java we cannot able to override so you can see first of all we cannot able to override the static method so static members of the class is belongs to the class it doesn't belongs to the object and the method overriding concept is specifically available with the object so static members we cannot able to override because it's not available with the object so you can see we have a drive method is a static method right again in the child class we have a drive method it's a static method so can we say car class is overriding the drive method of parent class no so these are the separate method so drive method it's a vehicle class method here drive method it's a car class method so it's a specifically available to the class so can we access this static method you can see here drive method using the object yes you can able to access the static method using the object but java will give you the warning that you have to access the static method in a static way using the class name right but if you use the object name then java will automatically convert v into vehicle right so you are writing v dot drive java internally will convert vehicle dot drive so it will not give you the compilation error you can able to access the static method of the class using the object but it will give you the warning so here what will be the output so we are just writing v dot drive that means it's a vehicle dot drive so it will print driving vehicle so here we need to understand we are creating the object of car but still v dot drive it will call the parent class method because it's a static method so it will not call the overridden method right perfect so i'll just complete here we cannot able to override the static method we cannot able to override the private method and we cannot able to override the final method so these are the keyword if you use it with method then we cannot able to override that method let's check for the statement number 2 so in this statement number 2 using the parent class reference we are calling the res method and res method is the instance method so we can able to override the instance method right so here it will print the driving at speed and what will be the max speed value is it a 200 or 180 so we are calling the child class method so definitely it will take the variable of child class only right so it will print the driving at speed 180 so because we are creating object of car class using parent class reference and res method is the instance method so it will call the overridden method so first output is this second output is this perfect let's try to check the output of statement number 3 so here we are just accessing v dot max speed so what will be the output 200 or 180 so here also we need to understand the fourth one we cannot override the variable in java so if we are just writing max speed 200 in the child class we are creating the same variable max speed 180 then it will hide the parent class value so now wherever you are accessing the max speed inside the child class it will take the value 180 it will not take the value 200 so this will hide the parent class value 200 inside the child class right so inside the child class now we have a max speed 180
and you can see we cannot override the variable that means if you are using v.maxspeed it will not call the max speed from the child class because we are using the reference of the parent class so it will just call the max speed from the parent class so here the answer will be 200 so whenever we are using the dynamic polymorphism you have to understand which things we can able to override so whatever things we can able to override it will call from the child class and if something we cannot able to override it will call from the parent class i hope you are clear now which things we can able to override and which things we cannot able to override in java and what will be the output of this question welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so here we have a one class question 2 and inside that we have a main method and from the main method we are calling the function that is the fun and whatever return value this function is returning we are trying to print inside the main method so first of all let's check the function we are calling from the main method and main method is a static method right so this function has to be static because inside the static method we can able to access only static members so function is a static right so there is no compilation error inside the main method perfect let's try to check the function and inside the function we have a one static variable integer x is equal to 0 and we are trying to return the plus plus x so first of all we have to check here so what is the scope of this variable x so the scope of this variable x is inside this function only right so this is a local variable and local variable we can't make static because it doesn't make sense the scope of this variable is inside this function only right so what is the meaning to make it static so this variable is not available at the class level so we can't make it static so it will give you the compilation error that local variable you cannot make this static so whenever you are using the local variable you can't make the local variable static you can't use the public private so you cannot use the access specifier so in the local variable you can't make static you can't use the access specifier you can't make the local variable abstract because it's a local variable and it's not available with the class so we can't make the abstract as well so what one thing we can use here so only one keyword we can use with the local variable and that is the final so we can able to make the local variable final if we want to make the variable value constant so only final is permitted when we are using the local variable perfect i hope you are clear why this question will give you the compilation error and what are the keywords we can able to use with the local variable and what are the keywords we cannot able to use with the local variable welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so here we have static integer i is equal to 10 we have a main method inside that we are calling the change value method and the change value method it's taking the one integer parameter so integer i and it's also static and we are just trying to set the value of i is 50 and after calling the change value method we are trying to print the value of i again so here main method is static so inside the static method we can able to use only static members so change value has to be static and the i has to be static so change value is static i is static perfect so there is no compilation error in this program let's try to check what will be the output so first of all when we execute this program it will execute this line it will create a value of i is equal to 10 inside the memory and it's a static variable after that we are calling the change value method 
so here we need to understand java is a pass by value so whenever we are passing the parameter in the method it will get copied into this variable so java will create another variable i so inside the memory there is another variable i and it got the value that is the 10 we have passed the value of this i variable that is the 10 inside the this i variable so again this variable got the value that is the 10 so we have a two variable one is the static variable and one is the local variable so this is a static variable that we are storing here and this is the local variable we are storing here so the scope of this local variable inside this method only we will not able to access this i variable inside main method so whenever we are calling the change value method the value of i that is 10 will get copied here and now we are modifying this i value again 50 so here it's a 50 perfect after that we are trying to print the value of i so what will be the value 50 or 10 so you can see this 50 we have stored inside this i and we will not able to access this i outside the change value right so here we are printing the value of this i only and still the value of static integer i is still 10 so here it will print the output that is 10 so we haven't changed this variable value by calling this method we have changed this local variable value and we haven't changed this static variable value so here we are printing the static variable so it is still 10 so output of this question is 10 perfect I hope you are clear why this question will give you the output 10. Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question we have to check what will be the output of each statement. So before we jump into this program, let's try to understand some of the basic concepts of Java. So first of all, let's understand the priority of the operator. So in the expression, whenever we have a more than one operator, which operator we have to evaluate first, this one or this one. So we need to check the priority of the operator. So here consider this example. Here we have a addition and multiplication. So which one we have to perform first, multiplication or addition. So we need to check the priority for the multiplication and addition. So multiplication has a highest priority. So we will do the multiplication first, right? So in any expression, first of all, we need to check the priority of the operator. Second, we have to check the associativity of the operator. So consider an example, let's say this expression. So here you can see in this expression, we have a two operator and both are plus. So both has the same priority, right? So now which operator we have to evaluate first? the first addition or the second addition. So whenever in the expression we have a more than one operator with the same priority, at that time we have to check the associativity of the operator. So if associativity is left to right, then we just have to scan left to right and whichever operator we are getting first, we have to evaluate that first. And if associativity is right to left, then we have to go right to left and whichever operator we are getting first, we have to evaluate that first. Most of the operator has the associativity left to right. You will be able to find the link of all the operators priority and associativity in Java in the description below. Perfect. And the last one and the third one, whenever we are using the plus operator with the integer and string, it will behave differently. So whenever we have a two value, a string and string, then plus will behave as a concatenation operator. So whenever we have a both the data type string, and when we do the addition, it will just concatenate. It will merge the two string. Whenever we have a string plus integer, again, it will do the concatenation. Whenever we have an integer plus string, again, it will do the concatenation. But whenever we have an integer plus integer, then it will do the addition. So it will do i plus whatever next number we have. So it will do addition and it will give you the result. Perfect. So we have to understand these three concepts before we jump into this question. First of all, you need to understand the priority of the operator. 
then you have to understand the associativity of the operator so in the expression whenever we have a more than one operator which has the same priority then you have to check for the associativity and the third one the polymorphic operator plus so plus operator will behave differently whenever we have a string in the expression so whenever we have a string it will concatenate whenever we have a both the value are integer then and then it will do the addition perfect let's try to jump to the question so here we have a two string uh, str1 hello str2 java and we have a two integer i and j so i is 10 and j is equal to 20 now we have a eight expression and we just have to evolute this eight expression so first of all we have a i plus j so what is the value of i 10 j 20 both are integer it will do the addition so first answer is 30. second one inside the double quote we are printing i plus j so it's a string only so whenever you are writing something inside the double quote java will consider as a string it will just print as it is it will not take the value so here the answer will be i plus j the third one it's a string plus integer so you can see here string plus integer it will do concatenation so what is a string one it's a hello what is the i it's a 10 so answer will be hello 10. so let's go to the fourth one here we have a string one plus i plus j so here most of the people are getting confused because we are evaluating first i plus j both are integer we are doing the 30 and we are saying that answer is hello 30 but you can see this is the expression and whenever you have an expression first of all you have to check for the priority of the operator here we have a plus and plus so both have a same priority right so whenever you have a same priority you just have to check associativity so associativity of plus it's a left to right so first of all you have to do the this one string plus i so string is hello i is 10 then the answer for this one it's a hello 10 and again hello 10 is a string when you do string plus i it's again concatenation and you will get string so here we got string that is the hello 10 plus again plus j it's a 20 so string plus again integer so it's again concatenation so it's a hello 10 and 20. similarly in the fifth one we have an expression we just have to go left to right because plus has the same priority right so when we go left to right first we are getting i plus j and both are integer here so it will do the addition 10 plus 20 it's a 30 and then plus string one so it's it's a concatenation so it's a hello so now it's a 30 hello let's go to the statement number six here we have a string one plus i multiplied by j so here we have a two operator plus and multiplication and multiplication has the highest priority so multiplication we are doing first so i into j so 10 into 20 it's 200 then we will do the addition so hello plus 200 so answer will be hello 200 let's go to the statement number seven here we have a string one plus i minus j this is very interesting one so here in the expression we have a two operator plus and minus both has a same priority so we need to check the associativity so associativity is the left to right so first we will do str1 plus i that means hello plus 10 so it's a hello 10 minus j that is 20 so hello 10 minus 20 so whenever we are doing hello 10 minus 20 so this is string this is integer and string minus integer is not defined in java that means we don't have any operator like minus with this string so string minus integer java will give you the compilation error because java will not able to understand what are you doing here string minus integer that is meaningless because we don't have any operator like minus with this string so here you will get the compilation error and the last one here we have an expression and here we have a three operator plus 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 simple all having a same priority so we will just do the associativity left to right so go left to right so string plus integer concatenation so it's a hello it's a str1 i is 10 so hello 10 again plus j so it's a 20 so hello 20 
again plus another string it's a java so hello 1020 java so here the answer is hello 1020 java perfect so here you need to understand three important concept first one priority of the operator second one associativity of the operator and the third one how addition will behave when we have a string and integer perfect i hope you are clear what will be the output of this question welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output first of all let's try to understand what is given in the program so here we have a one class question 9 inside that we have a main method and from the main method we are trying to call the function fun and whatever value function is returning we are trying to print inside the console so try to pause the video and try to think what will be the output of this question or will this code compile or do we have any kind of a compilation error so here first of all we need to check whatever variables we are using inside the main method or whatever function we are using inside the main method that has to be static because main method is a static method and inside the static method we can able to use only static members so function is it a static no so compiler will give you the error here so compilation error will be you have to make this function static to use inside the static main method so this question will give you the compilation error and here you need to understand inside the static methods we can able to use only static members that means if we are using variables inside the static method that variable has to be static if we are calling any methods from the main method or from the static methods the method has to be static otherwise compiler will give you the error perfect i hope you are clear why this question will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so here we have one static variable i and we have a one main method and inside that we have a local variable i and we are trying to print value of i so will this code give compilation error at this line because both the variable has the same name i right so definitely we will not get any compilation error because this is the static variable and this is the local variable so local variable will hide the static variable value right so these are the two different variable so this is the class level variable and this is the local variable so whenever we try to print the value of i which variable value it will take static variable or local variable so here local variable will take the priority local variable will hide the static variable so if we try to print value of i what will be the value of i here so it will give you the compilation error because local variable we have to initialize so before we use any local variable we have to initialize but here we are directly using it so java will give you the compilation error first of all initialize the value of i with some initial value so this code will give you the compilation error perfect i hope you are clear now why this question will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's check for the compilation error so here we have a first class which is the parent class and it has a one method which is print name and it's a abstract method right and you can see inside the class when we have a at least one abstract method we have to make the class abstract right but this class is not abstract so java will give you the compilation error if this class was abstract then child class will extend the parent class 
and child class will override the print name method and it's printing java programming and inside the question 15 class we have a main method so we are creating the object of child class and we are storing inside the parent class reference so this is the example of dynamic polymorphism and using p dot print name it will print the java programming right but in this case we are missing the abstract keyword at the class level so class has to be abstract so this will give you the compilation error so i hope you are clear now why this question will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so here expectation is we want to print the output 3 5 6 9 10 12 15 18 and 20 so basically we want to print the number from 1 to 20 which is divisible by 5 or 3 so first of all let's check for the compilation error so here we are taking the for loop which is executing from 1 to 20 so there is no error inside the for loop here we have a two condition if i modulo of i is equal to is equal to 0 then print the value of i and another condition if i modulo 3 is equal to is equal to 0 then print value of i so there is no error inside the if statement as well so there is no error inside this code perfect so let's try to check what will be the output so here we are executing this for loop from 1 to 20 and we are checking that if number is divisible by 5 print that number right and if number is divisible by 3 then print that number also right so consider the example let's say value of i is 3 so this condition is true it will print 3 and let's say now i is 5 so this condition is true it will print the value 5 again let's say i is 6 this condition is true it will print 6 let's say i is 7 no condition is true i is 8 no condition is true i is 9 this condition is true so it will print 9 i is 10 this condition is true it will print 10 i is 11 no condition is true 12 yes this condition is true it will print 12 now let's say i is 13 so no condition is true i is 14 no condition is true and let's consider i is 15 which is very important so whenever i is 15 first of all this condition is true it will print the value 15 again this condition is also true so this will also print 15 so what we want to print we just want to print number which is divisible by 5 or 3 we have to print that number so we want the number 3 5 6 9 10 12 15 18 20 but here 15 will get printed two times because 15 is divisible by 5 it will print 15 it's also divisible by 3 so it will print 15 so if we want this output then you have to write down this into the else if part so if this condition is not true then check this condition if this condition is true then we don't have to check this condition right because we have to print number is divisible by 5 or number is divisible by 3 so if number is divisible by 5 we don't have to check that is number is divisible by 3 or not or you can combine this condition using or operator so again if you combine this condition using or operator it will give you this output but in current program it will print 15 two times so it's not giving us the expected output perfect i hope you are clear what will be the output of this question welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes what will be the output so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so here we have a one class inside that we have a main method and we are declaring two string variable which has the same value right so whenever we are comparing this two string variable using equals operator it will compare the memory address so here in this question we are trying to take the boolean value and we are trying to pass the boolean value inside the switch statement and switch statement doesn't support the boolean value because boolean variable 
has a only two possible value either true or false right so we don't need the default and just for the true and false switch statement doesn't make sense so whenever you have a boolean variable if and else works best with the boolean variable so in java switch statement doesn't support the boolean value right so this will give you the compilation error so i hope you are clear now why this code will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's check do we have any compilation error in this code so here we are taking one scanner class object and we are taking the two string variables in the first variable we are directly assigning the value inside the string second time we are using the scanner class and we are taking the value from the user so this value we are getting at the runtime and at the runtime we are trying to enter stay inside so same value we are trying to enter at the runtime now we are trying to compare both the variables using equals equals operator so we can able to compare these two variables using equals equals operator right so there is no compilation error here there is no compilation error here and there is no compilation error here as well right so in this program there is no compilation error perfect let's try to identify what will be the output so first of all we have to understand whenever we are creating str1 and str2 we have to understand how this variable will gonna store inside the memory so if you create a variable 1 str1 then in the java in the memory we have a one string constant pool right so inside that we have a value that is this stay inside and our str1 will pointing to that value so this is the str1 right perfect so str2 value we are entering at the run time so java will not store this stay inside inside the string pool so we have to create a object for that so run time we are entering stay inside so java will create a object for str2 and inside that we have a value that is a stay inside now if you try to compare two string using equals equals operator then it will compare the memory address for this two string and you can see here both the values are getting stored at the different location right so this will give you the result false if we are trying to assign str2 is equal to stay inside directly in the program then it will not create a another value or it will not create a object it will just create another variable str2 but it will point to the same location right at that time it will give you the true but currently we are entering at the run time so it will create a object so both the value will be at the different location so here it will compare the address of both the location and it will finally give the output false perfect so i hope you are clear why we are getting the output false for this question welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so here we have a one class inside that we have a main method and here we are taking the three variables so in the first variable we are directly assigning the string value in the second variable we are directly assigning the string value it's the same value right and in the third variable we are assigning the same value but we are using the object so we are creating the object of the string so these three lines will not give you the compilation error so in java we can assign the value of the string directly as a string literal and also we can able to create a object of the string after we create these three variables we are comparing string 1 and string 2 using equals operator right will this line give the compilation error no right it will not throw the compilation error next line we are trying to compare string 1 with this string 3 and using the equals method right and this line will also not throw the compilation error so there is no compilation error in this program 
Perfect. Let's try to focus on the output. What will be the output? So this is very very important concept and let's try to learn in a very simple way. So first of all let's understand what is the difference between creating the string variable in this way and in this way. So consider the example of the Java memory. So let's say we have a Java memory and inside that we have a one part which is the string pool right where we are creating the string constant. So whenever you are creating the first variable str1 is equal to tgif. So I'll just use the short form. Thank God it's Friday, right? So it will create a str1. So here it will store the value that is the tgif, right? And we have a s1 variable pointing to this value. Second time when you create a another variable with the same value, it will not create a second time tgif. It will just create a variable s2 and it will point to the same location, right? So when you execute the first two statement, only one value will be created inside the memory. If you execute the third statement, then it will create another object which is the str3. And here it will just add the value tgif inside this object. So tgif. So we know that each object has its own memory, right? So whenever you are create a multiple object, multiple object will have its own value. But whenever you are using in this way, whenever you are directly assigning the value inside the string, then string literal will be created only once if it is the same string. But if you are changing the str2, let's say tgif1, then it will create another value in the memory that is the tgif1 and now s2 will point here, right? Perfect. Now let's understand s1 is equal to is equal to s2. What will be the output of this line? So whenever we are comparing this string with the equals equals, it will compare the memory address. So you can see if s1 and s2 both are pointing at the same value, then the memory address for this value will be same, right? So this will return the true. And second line, if you try to compare s1 with the s3, then it will compare the value of str1 and str3 because we are using the equals method. So whenever you are using the equals method, it will compare the value of two string. So both the values are equal. So it will print true. So finally result of this program will be true and true. If you try to compare str1 is equal to is equal to str3, then what will be the output? So you can see str1 is pointing here and str3 has its own memory, right? So location of this memory and this memory will be different, right? So this will give you false. Perfect. So I hope you are clear with this question and the concept of the string when you directly assign the value inside the string and when you try to create an object and try to assign the value inside the string, what will be the behavior? Welcome to the Java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that, you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this example, we have to check which of the following lines will give you the compilation error. So here we have a four lines and what are the lines will give you the compilation error. So this program is based on the dynamic polymorphism. If you haven't watched the video of dynamic polymorphism, first of all, try to watch it. You will find out the link in the description once you understand the dynamic polymorphism concept, this question will be very clear to you. If we talk about dynamic polymorphism, we know that this combination will definitely work. Second one, it will work. Third one, it will work. We can use the parent class reference and we can create an object of child class, right? But the fourth one will give you the compilation error that we cannot create a parent class object and store inside the child class reference, right? But here you can see that we cannot create parent class object as well in this scenario because parent class is an abstract class and we cannot create an object of abstract class. So here first line will give you the compilation error. Last line will give you the compilation error. Only second and third will compile. So dynamic polymorphism is very important concept. You will get so many questions in the interview based on the dynamic polymorphism. So still, if you haven't watched the video on the dynamic polymorphism, first of all, try to watch it and you will able to find the link in the description. Perfect. So answer for this question, the line number one and line number four will give you the compilation error because we have a parent class. It's an abstract class.
I hope you are clear why this question will give you the compilation error on line number 1 and line number 4. Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first, after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question, first we have to check will this code compile? If yes, what will be the output? So first of all, let's check for the compilation error. So here we have a one parent class. Inside that we have a one method which is the print message. And inside that we are printing from parent class, right? So we don't have any compilation error inside the parent class. We have another class which is the child class, which is extending the parent class. And it also has print message which is overridden from parent class. So here we are printing from child class, right? So here also we don't have any compilation error. Let's try to check another class question 21. It has a main method and we are trying to create an object of parent class and we are trying to store in the reference of child class. So here we are using the dynamic polymorphism. So let's try to understand what we are doing here. After that we can able to understand are we getting compilation error or not. So we had taken example of Sony TV and LG TV when we learn about the dynamic polymorphism. If you haven't watched the video of dynamic polymorphism, first of all try to watch that. You will able to find the link in the description. After that you will able to understand this concept very clearly. So consider that we have a parent class Sony TV and consider that we have a child class LG TV. So here you can see that we are creating the reference of child class. That means we are creating the remote control of the LG TV which has a more buttons. And we try to create an object of parent class that means using the LG TV remote control we try to change the channels of Sony TV. And we know that this combination will give you the compilation error in dynamic polymorphism. Because this remote control has a more number of buttons and we don't have a sufficient channels in the Sony TV because it's a parent class, right? So Java will get confused when user will press the buttons which is not available in the Sony TV, what we have to do, right? So this will create an ambiguity and this will give you the compilation error. But what we are trying to do, we are explicitly typecasting the parent class into the child class. That means we are trying to tell Java that we are okay to convert from Sony TV to the LG TV, right? So we are trying to convert the parent class object into the child class. So now compiler will not give you the error because you are explicitly typecasting the object of the parent class, right? But when you run it, it's not possible to typecast the Sony TV into LG TV. Because Sony TV has a 4 channel, LG TV has a 6 channel. So Java will get confused if you typecast the Sony TV into LG TV. What is the implementation of these two more methods, right? So you can't typecast the parent class into child class, but you can typecast child class into parent class and that will be the implicit. So this will be implicit. Java will not give you any kind of an error. No runtime error, no compile time error. So this will be implicit. But you have to do explicit here. When you want to typecast parent class into child class. But Java will give you the runtime error because it's not possible. It's meaningless to convert from parent class to child class. I'll give you a very simple example. Let's say we have a parent class vehicle and we have a child class car. So we can able to extend vehicle class into car class. Now you can see, can we say car is a vehicle? Yes, definitely, right? Car is a vehicle. But can we say vehicle is a car? No, right? Because vehicle is not car. Car is a vehicle, right? So same thing here. You can't typecast the parent class into child class. So this will give you the runtime error. And runtime you will get the exception that you cannot typecast the parent class into the child class, right? So this program will give you the runtime exception. So I hope you are clear now when we do the explicit typecasting of parent class object into child class what will happen and what will be the output of this question. Welcome to the Java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this challenge, first of all, we have to check will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? 
So first of all, let's check for the compilation error. So here we have a one public class. Inside that we have an integer array which is data, right? After that we have a main method and inside the main method we are trying to find the length of the integer array, right? Perfect. So first of all we need to check the main method is a static method, right? So whatever variable we are using inside this main method, it has to be static, right? So we are using data and it's a static, right? So there is no compilation error with respect to static. Now second thing which is most important, so we haven't initialized the data, right? We haven't initialized the integer array and directly we are using data dot length. So will it give compilation error because we haven't initialized the data? So this will not give you the compilation error because whenever we are making the variable static, so by default this variable will get initialized. So we don't have to initialize explicitly. If this is a local variable, if this integer data, if we have declared inside the main method, then it will give you the compilation error that you haven't initialized this integer array. So here there is no compilation error because we are using the static integer data. So this integer array by default initialize. Now third one which is again most important, what is the initial value? So if we are saying that if we are making it static then integer array which has a by default value. So what is that by default value? So default value for collection of data is the null. So whenever you are using the array or whenever you are using any object, by default value for all the collection data it's a null, right? So currently this data is pointing to null. And if we try to find out the data dot length, the length of the null, then it will give you the runtime exception, which is the null pointer exception. So whenever your variable is pointing to the null value, and if you try to do some operation on that variable, you will get the null pointer exception. So here the answer for this question, it will give you null pointer exception. So it's a runtime exception. You will not get the compilation error. I hope you are clear now when you will get the null pointer exception and what will be the output for this program. Perfect. Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question, first of all we have to check will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? So first of all, let's check for the compilation error. So here we have a one parent class, which is the abstract class. So abstract class parent and it has a one abstract method. So abstract static void print message. So here let's understand what is the meaning of abstract keyword. So meaning of abstract keyword, we are insisting child class that you have to compulsory override this method, right? So whenever we are using the abstract keyword, we are insisting child class that you have to compulsory override this method. So whenever any child class will extend the parent class, that child class has a responsibility to override print message method. But you can see the second keyword, it's a static. So static will restrict the method to be overridden, right? So whenever you are making the method static, we cannot override the static methods. So here we are using the two keyword which has a contradict behavior. One is insisting, one is restricting, right? So Java will give you the compilation error that please remove the static keyword because this method has a no body. So abstract is making sense, but static, you can't make a abstract method static, right? Perfect. So this code will give you the compilation error because we are using the method static and abstract. If we are removing the let's say static, then what will be the output? If we remove the static, then definitely this code will compile. Child class will override the parent method that is the print message and it is printing stay safe. And after that inside the question 23, we are creating the object of the child class and we are using the reference of the parent class. So this is the valid case in the dynamic polymorphism and using p dot print message, it will call the overridden method and it will print the output stay safe. So if we remove the static keyword, then it will print the output stay safe. But currently if we have a static keyword, this code will give you the compilation error. Perfect. I hope you are clear with this question why this question will throw the compilation error. Welcome to the Java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, 
try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so here we have a one vehicle class inside that we have a one variable max speed and we have a one constructor uh, which is taking one argument that is the max speed and we have a one method that is the drive perfect we have a another class which is car which is extending the vehicle class and it's also having a drive method so basically a car class overriding the drive method from the vehicle class right and lastly we have a another class which is question 24 inside that we have a main method and we are creating the object of a car class and through that object we are accessing the drive method so you can try to pause the video and try to go through the program what is given in the program and try to brainstorm will this code give you the compilation error or it will compile before we jump into this question let's try to understand very important concept so whenever we have a parent child relationship between the class it's very important to understand whenever in the parent class we have only constructor which is taking some arguments or in other words we don't have any constructor in a parent class which is taking zero argument then we must create constructor inside the child class and we need to call the parent class constructor first from the child class constructor so this is very important concept you can try to pause the video and try to read it again so whenever we have a parent and child relationship between the class whenever inside the parent class we have a only constructor which is taking some argument or we don't have any constructor in the parent class which is taking zero argument then we must create constructor inside the child class and it's compulsory to call parent class constructor first from the child class constructor perfect let's look at the question again so you can see in the parent class we have a only one constructor which is taking some argument now it's compulsory that we create a constructor inside the child class but you can see here car class we don't have a constructor inside the car class so java will give you the compilation error so whenever in the parent class we have only constructor which is taking some argument or we don't have any constructor which is taking zero argument then it's compulsory that we create a constructor inside the child class and from the child class constructor we have to call the parent class constructor first so here in this question we don't have a constructor inside the car class so it will give you the compilation error perfect i hope you are clear why this question will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so let's try to understand what is given in the program so we have a one vehicle class inside that we have a one variable and we have a one constructor which is taking one argument and we have a one method we have a another class which is car and it's extending the vehicle class and inside the car class we also have a one constructor which is also taking one argument and we also have a one method perfect lastly we have a another class that is the question 25 which has a main method and inside the main method we are creating the object of the car class and using that object we are calling the drive method before we try to solve this question let's try to understand very important concept so whenever we have a parent child relationship between the class it's very important to understand whenever in the parent class we have only constructor which is taking some arguments or in other words we don't have any constructor in a parent class which is taking zero argument then we must create constructor inside the child class and we need to call the parent class constructor first from the child class constructor 
So this is very important concept. You can try to pause the video and try to read it again. So whenever we have a parent and child relationship between the class, whenever inside the parent class, we have a only constructor which is taking some argument or so, we don't have any constructor in the parent class which is taking zero argument, then we must create constructor inside the child class and it's compulsory to call parent class constructor first from the child class constructor. Perfect. Let's look at the question again. So, so in this question, in the parent class, we have a one constructor and it is taking one argument. So whenever in the parent class, we have a only constructor which is taking some argument or we don't have any constructor which is taking zero argument, then it's compulsory in the child class, we have to create a constructor and we have to call the parent class constructor from the child class constructor. So you can see in this question, in the child class, we have a constructor, but we are not calling the parent class constructor from the child class constructor. So Java will give you the compilation error. So how to call the parent class constructor from the child class constructor? So here we have to write down the super and we have to pass one argument. We can pass any integer value, but we have to add this line as a first statement. So from the child class constructor, it's compulsory to call parent class constructor explicitly using super keyword. And also if we have a more than one constructor inside the child class, then it's compulsory from all the constructor, we have to call the parent class constructor. So if we have a five constructor inside the child class, it's compulsory that we have to add this line inside the five constructor regardless of which constructor we are using inside the main method. So Java will not check which constructor you have used here. So Java will not check this code. Java will check the design. So is this design is correct? So currently this design is not correct. From the child class constructor, we have to call the parent class constructor first and that we are missing. So Java will give you the compilation error. Perfect. I hope you are clear now why this question will give you the compilation error. Welcome to the Java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that, you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question, first of all, we have to check will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? So first of all, let's try to check for the compilation error. So here inside the main method, we are taking the two variables integer i is equal to zero and integer count is equal to zero. After that, we are taking the for loop integer i is equal to zero, i less than or equal to 10, i plus plus and each time we are just incrementing the value of count by one. After the for loop, we are just printing the value of count and i. So we don't have any compilation error in this program. Perfect. Let's try to check what will be the output. So this type of a question, it looks easy, but generally we are making the mistake in this silly question because we are in a hurry to solve this question. Instead of that, just try to execute the program very quickly by your hand. You will able to find out the answer. So first of all, we are taking the two variables i and count. So we are initializing the count with zero and i with the zero. After that, we are starting the for loop. So we are starting i is equal to zero, which is already zero. And we are checking zero less than or equal to 10. Yes, zero is less than or equal to 10. So condition is true. It will just make count plus plus. So count is now one. After that i plus plus. So i is also one. It will check the condition one less than or equal to 10. Yes, condition is true. So make count plus plus. So count is two. Again i plus plus, so i is also 2. Again check for the condition 2 less than or equal to 10. Condition is true? Yes. Then count plus plus, it's a 3. Then i is also 3. So you can see you are getting the pattern. First we are incrementing the value of count, then we are incrementing the value of i. So let's say 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9 and let's say count is 10 
now i is also 10 now let's check the condition when i is 10 10 less than or equal to 10 condition is true yes because 10 is less than or equal to 10 condition is still true right so it will do count plus plus so count is 11 after that it will also do i plus plus that means i is also 11 and then it will check 11 is less than or equal to 10 no condition is false 11 is not less than or equal to 10 right so it will exit the for loop and finally it will print the value of count and i so what will be the value of count it's 11 what will be the value of i it's 11 so finally it will print 11 and 11 perfect i hope you are clear why this question will give you the output 11 and 11 welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so here inside the main method we are taking the integer count is equal to 0 then we are executing the for loop for the 10 times and we have a condition that if i modulo 3 is equal to is equal to 0 then just make the count value 0 after the execution of the for loop just print the value of count and i so generally when we are getting this type of a question most people will start solving this logic but before that just try to check for the syntax so you can see here integer i is equal to 0 so the scope of this i variable is inside this for loop only so scope of i variable is between this two bracket only so you can't access the i outside the for loop and what we are trying to do we are trying to print the value of i outside the for loop but variable i is not available here so java will give you the compilation error that i cannot be resolved a variable that means we unable to find the variable i so there was a variable i which was created inside the for loop and when for loop got completed it was destroyed so now here we don't have any variable i so this question will give you the compilation error so whenever you are getting this type of a question first of all try to check for the syntax try to check for the compilation error then you can start solving the logic of the program perfect so i hope you are clear why this question will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's check for the compilation error so here we have a main method and inside the main method we are taking the two variables i and count so count we are initializing with the zero and i we are using inside the for loop so we are using the for loop integer i is equal to 0 i less than or equal to 20 i plus plus and inside the for loop we are just writing count plus plus and break and outside the for loop we are printing the value of count and value of i so syntax wise we don't have any compilation error in this question so whenever we are getting this type of a question most of the people will try to solve the question at once instead of that just try to execute the program by yourself from top to bottom and just write it down what are the variables you are using so let's say first of all we are taking the two variables i and second one is the count so count we have initialized with the zero so i'll just write down zero now we are taking the for loop so we are initializing i with the zero so let's say i we are initializing with the zero now zero less than or equal to 20 condition is true yes condition is true so it will go inside the for loop it will do count plus plus now the value of count is one after that we are just breaking the for loop so we are writing break that means it will break the for loop so our control will reach out to the system.out.println print the value of count so what is the value of count it's a one so here it will print one what is the value of i it's a zero so it will print zero so output of this program it's a one and zero 
Perfect. I hope you are clear why this question will give you the output 1 and 0. Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question, first of all we have to check will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? So first of all, let's try to check for the compilation error. So here we have a one class which is parent and it has a one constructor which is taking one argument. We have a another class, it's a child which is extending the parent class and it has a two constructor. One is taking one argument and another is taking the zero argument. And it has a one method as well that is the celebrate. And from the method we are printing the celebrating eid and we have a another class where we have a main method and from the main method we are creating the object of the child class and we are calling this celebrate method okay perfect so you can try to pause the video and try to go through the question so you will understand what is the question first of all let's try to understand the behavior of the constructor whenever we have a parent child relationship between the class so first point we have to understand here whenever we have a parent child relationship between the class whenever we create an object of the child class it will call the constructor of the child class but it's compulsory to call parent class constructor from the child class constructor and that is called constructor chaining. So if parent class has any constructor which is taking zero argument then we don't have to call the parent class constructor from the child class java will by default call it but if all the constructor of the parent class is taking some argument then it's compulsory to call parent class constructor from the child class constructor and we have to call it explicitly like this so here you can see in the child class we have a two constructor but in the first constructor we are not calling the parent class constructor but from the second constructor, we are calling the parent class constructor. So Java will not check what you are writing inside the main method. What Java will check? Java will check this two class. It has a parent child relationship. Yes. How many constructor we have inside the child class? Two constructor. So both the constructor should call the parent class constructor first. So here you can see second constructor is calling the parent class constructor using super keyword but first constructor is not calling so java will give you the compilation error here because whenever you are creating this kind of a design you are giving the flexibility to the user that you can create an object of the child class using this constructor as well right so if user will create an object of child class using this constructor then from this constructor you are not calling the constructor of parent class first so Java will give you the compilation error that first you call the parent class constructor first using this super keyword and pass some argument because parent class is also taking some argument. Once you add this line here as a first statement then this code will compile. So I had posted this question on LinkedIn but most of the people are giving the wrong answer. So most of the answer I received it will print happy Eid and celebrating Eid because they are getting confused that from the main method we are just creating the object of the child class by using the second constructor and from second constructor we are calling the parent class constructor right but java will not check what you are writing here whenever you are creating this design java will check a child class has a two constructor and parent class has a one constructor which is taking one argument so child class constructor both the constructor has a responsibility to call the parent class constructor first explicitly with passing one argument otherwise it will give you the compilation error perfect i hope you are clear why this question will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question, first of all, we have to check will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? So first of all, let's check for the compilation error. So before we jump into this program, let's try to take one example. 
So consider the example here. Let's say we have a one laptop cover and we have a one mobile cover. So if we try to store mobile into this laptop cover, is there any problem? No, right? We can easily store our mobile inside the laptop cover, right? But what if we try to store our laptop inside the mobile cover? We will able to store only small portion of the laptop, right? So same concept we have to apply here. So you can see we are taking one integer variable i is equal to 20 and that integer value we are trying to store into double. So Java will not give you the compilation error because integer is a 4 byte long and double is the 8 byte long. So we are trying to store a smaller value into bigger data type. So Java will not give you the compilation error. But the problem is the same 8 byte value we are trying to store into the 4 byte data type. So here we have a double D which is 8 byte. Now we are trying to store into the 4 byte data type. So here compiler will give you the error that you are losing some value. So currently the value of double D is the 8.0. So we are losing the dot zero. But compiler doesn't know that it's a dot zero. Compiler will think that you are losing some decimal part. So it will give you the error that whenever you are trying to store from bigger value into the smaller data type, you are losing some part of your data. So compiler will give you the error. So this program will give you the compilation error. If you still wants to convert this double value into the integer, then you have to do explicit typecasting. So here you have to write down that I'll typecast to the integer. So this is the explicit typecasting. After that compiler will not give you the error. So now the value of j will be again 8. Perfect. I hope you are clear now why this code will give you the compilation error. Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So this is the birthday special question and we just have to find out how young am I. So basically we have to find out what will be the output of this program. So let me zoom it out first then we will check what will be the output of this program. So first of all we have to evaluate this expression and inside the expression we have a multiplication, division, addition and subtraction. So first of all we need to check for the priority of the operator. So in Java multiplication and division has a highest priority and then we have a addition and subtraction. So in the expression whenever you have a multiplication and division you have to perform first then you have to perform the addition and subtraction. But what if we have a multiplication and division both? So you can say we have a multiplication and division. So which one we have to perform first? Multiplication or division? So for that we have to check the associativity because multiplication and division has the same priority. So in the expression when you have an operator which has the same priority you have to check the associativity. And associativity for multiplication and division it's a left to right. So you just have to go left to right and whichever operator you are getting first multiplication or division you have to evolute first. So let's try to find out result of this expression. So first of all we are just trying to go left to right and we will just evolute multiplication and division first. So here we have 8 into 25 it's a 200. Uh, 200 divided by 50 it's a 4, 4 divided by 4 it's a 1, 1 into 90 it's a 90, 90 into 2 it's a 180, 180 divided by 15 so it's a 12. So here we got 12. Now we will not do the addition. We will just go left to right and try to evolute multiplication and division first. So here we have a multiplication. So here we got 12 plus 18 into 3 it's a 54. Now again we will not do the minus. So we will keep minus as it is and here we will do 14 into 3. So it's a 42 minus 10. Now we have completed multiplication and division. Now we got plus and minus. Again same thing. First of all we are just scanning the left to right because plus and minus has the same priority. So we have to check the associativity and associativity is a left to right. So 12 plus 54 minus 42 minus 10. 
so here we have a 12 plus 54 minus 42 minus 10 so here it's a minus 52 and 54 minus 52 it's a 2 plus 12 so it's a 14 so finally our number is 14 perfect now we have to evaluate the if condition so before we evaluate the if condition let's understand very important concept so whenever we are using the or operator and we have a two condition if first condition is true java will not check for the second condition because regardless of the second condition if first condition is true the expression will be true similarly in the end operator whenever we have a two condition when first condition is false java will not check for the second condition because regardless of the second condition the expression will be false so in the or operator one condition is true java will not check for the second condition because expression will be true only in the end first condition is false java will not check for the second condition because expression value will be false only so now let's try to evaluate this condition so here we have again two operator and an or so which one has a highest priority so and operator has a highest priority and or operator has a lowest priority so first of all we need to evaluate the end condition so let's try to evaluate the end condition so we have a number value 14 so first of all we are doing plus plus so it's a pre increment so it will increment the value of number by 1 so number is 15 15 greater than 30 condition is true no condition is false so this condition is false java will not check for the second condition so the value of this expression is false and the number value is now 15 because we are doing the one time increment so number value is now 15 now let's evaluate the second end condition so it will do plus plus number so now number value will be 16 so again it will check 16 greater than 25 no condition is false so again java will not check for the second condition so this expression is false this expression is false and false or false so the final condition is false and it will go into the else part and here we have a number into 2 so number is 16 16 into 2 it's a 32 minus 4 so it will be 28 so finally the output of this program it's a 28 perfect i hope you are clear why this program will give you the output 28 Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question, first of all we have to check will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? So first of all let's check for the compilation error. So here we have one main method and inside that we have one expression. And whatever result we are getting, we are trying to store into the variable i. Then we have a one condition and based on the condition, we are trying to print the i or inside the else part, we are trying to print some expression. So there is no compilation error in this program. Perfect. So let's try to check what will be the output of this program. So before we jump into the output, let's try to understand some concept. So here we have a one expression and we have a multiplication and division. So which operator we have to evaluate first multiplication or division. So Java has assigned the priority to each operator and as per the priority multiplication and division both has the same priority. So multiplication and division both are coming under the same priority. So now which operator we have to perform first multiplication or division. So whenever in the expression we are getting the more than one operator with the same priority then we have to check for the associativity and the associativity for both the operators are left to right. So you just have to scan left to right and whichever operator you are getting first you have to evaluate that first. So let's try to evaluate this expression. So first of all here we are doing 8 into 25 so it's a 200, 200 divided by 50 it's a 4, 4 divided by 2 it's a 2, 2 into 90 it's a 180, 180 into 2 it's a 360 and 360 divided by 15 it will give you the 24. So the value of i will be 24. Now before we evaluate this condition we have to understand another important concept 
So in Java, whenever you are using the OR operator, we have a two condition, first and second. So whenever you are using the OR operator, when first condition is true, Java will not check for the second condition. It will just make the expression true. So whenever you are using the OR operator, Java will just check the first condition. If it is true, then Java will not evaluate the second condition. Similarly, whenever you are using the AND condition, when first condition is false, Java will not check for the second condition. Because it doesn't make sense, first condition is false, regardless of the second condition, the whole expression will be false, right? So Java will just check for the first. If it is a false, then Java will not check for the second, whether it's a true or false. The expression will be false only. Similarly with the OR operator, when first value is true, regardless of the second value, expression value will be true. So here we have a value of i, 24, so it will check the first condition plus plus i. So it's a pre-increment operator. So first of all, it will increment the value of i by 1, so it's a 25. Now i is 25. So 25 greater than 10, yes, condition is true, it will not check for the second condition. So it will just try to print the value of i, which is 25. So this will print output 25. Perfect. I hope you are clear why this question will give you the output 25. Welcome to the Java Tricky Question Challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen. So try to pause the video, try to solve this challenge by yourself first. After that you can compare your thinking with my explanation. And that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes. So in this question, first of all we need to check will this code compile? If yes, then what will be the output? So first of all, let's check for the compilation error. So here we have a main method, inside that we are taking the one variable that is the integer i is equal to 5. Then we have a some expression and inside the expression we are using the pre-increment operator plus another pre-increment operator and post-increment operator. And whatever result we are getting for this expression we are storing into the result variable. Then we are trying to print the value of i and the value of result. So we don't have any compilation error in this program. We just need to evolute or we need to check what will be the value of i and what will be the value of result. Perfect. So let's try to check what will be the output of this program. So first of all we need to understand what is the pre-increment operator and what is the post-increment operator. So whenever we are using the pre-increment operator, it will do increment of this variable first and then it will do any other operation. And whenever we are using the post increment operator, it will first do all other operation and then it will increment the value of variable. Let's understand using simple example. Consider that we are having one integer variable r is equal to plus plus i. So if we are writing plus plus i, it will first increment the value of i, then it will assign into the r. So if we have a value of i is 5, then the value of r will be 6. But whenever we are using the post increment, that means i++, plus plus, then first it will do assignment and then it will do increment. So here the value of r will be 5 and the value of i will be 6. Because after the assignment, it will increment the value of i, right? So here, first of all, we need to understand this expression. So we have a two addition operator, right? So both are the same priority operator. So we have to evolute this expression left to right. So first of all, we have to evolute this one. So we are using the pre-increment. So here the value of i will be 6. So here it will be 6. Plus here again it's a pre-increment. So now it will increment the value of i by 1. So now i will be 7. Again there is a plus and here it's a post increment. So it will not increment the value of i by 1. So value of i will be 7 only. So it's a 7 plus 7, 14 plus 6, it's a 20. So result, it's a 20. But after we evolute this expression, the value of i here, it will increment. So after this expression, value of i will be 8. So here it will print the value of i, it's a 8. So finally output of this program, it will be 8 and 20. So here we just need to understand whenever we are using the pre-increment operator, we have to increment the value of variable first, then we have to do any other operation. And when we are using the post-increment, we have to do any other operation first, 
then we have to increment the value of variable perfect i hope you are clear now why this program will give you the output 8 and 20 welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes what will be the output so first of all let's check for the compilation error so here we have a main method and inside the main method we are initializing the array with the three numbers 10 20 and 30 and we are taking two more variable i and j so we have a i is equal to 5 and j is equal to 0 so after execution of this two line if you look at the structure of the memory we have a integer array which has a three value 10 20 and 30 so 10 20 and 30 so 10 will be stored at zeroth position 20 will be at one position and 30 will be at second position right perfect and we have a two more variables i and j so we have i and we have a j so value of i is 5 and value of j is 0 so it's a i j and this is our a variable which is the array right now inside the try block we are trying to access the value of array at the position number 3 and you can see we don't have a block or we don't have a memory at the position number 3 so we don't have a block or we don't have a position number 3 and we are trying to access it so what will happen will it give compilation error or it will give you the runtime exception so it will give you the runtime exception and you will get the exception that is the array index out of bound exception right so inside the try block this line will throw array index out of bound exception so it will try to catch the exception so it will check here do we have array index out of bound no next catch block do we have array index out of bound yes then it should print line number two right it should print line number two but before that it will give you the compilation error why because you can see we are catching the exception here and after that we are catching the number format exception so here exception can able to catch all the types of exception so if you want to catch this specific exception then you have to write down before the exception right if you are writing after the exception this code will never get executed because whenever we are getting any types of exception it will be catched by this block right so this will never get executed so compiler will give you the error that this catch block it's unreachable it will never get executed so we can able to understand with this simple example consider that we have a later if else so we are writing if else if then else if and then else if and then at the last we are writing else right so first we are checking this specific condition so we are checking is this condition true no then check this condition is this true no check this one no check this one no then finally execute else block so can we write down the else block first and then we can write down the specific condition so can we do that no right because else block will include all the condition so if this condition is not true this condition is not true then execute always else block so if we are writing something some specific condition after the else block then this conditions will never get executed java will give you the compilation error that while you are writing this condition it will never get executed because else block will able to execute all the conditions so similarly with the try catch exception is like a else block so if you want to catch this specific exception you have to write it down first and then at the last you can write down the exception and why exception can able to catch all the types of exception because exception is the parent class of all the specific exception so using dynamic polymorphism concept exception class can able to handle all the types of exception so we have to write it down at the last case block excellent so i hope you are clear now why this code will give you the compilation error welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question we have to check will this code compile if yes then what will be the output so first of all let's check for the compilation error 
so here we have a main method and from the main method we are calling the method one so main method is a static method so this method one has to be static because from the static method we can able to call only static method right so method one is the static method so there is no compilation error here now inside the method one we are initializing the array with the three numbers 10 20 30 so if you look at the structure of the memory we have a array and we have a 10 20 and 30 so 10 will be stored at position number 0 20 will be at 1 and 30 will be at 2 and this is our array a now inside the try block we are trying to print the number at the position number 2 so position number 2 we have a 30 so it will print the 30 here after that we are returning true from the function so we are basically returning from the function so the question is will control return from here or it will execute the finally block and then it will return the true so the tricky part here finally block will get executed before we are returning the true or it will just return the true and output will be only 30 so yes finally block will get executed regardless of the exception we are getting or not so whenever we are entering inside the try block finally block will get executed compulsory so output of this program will be 30 and it will print and and then it will return true so finally output of this program it's a 30 and end so we need to understand here whenever you are entering inside the try block finally block will always get executed perfect i hope you are clear why this question will give you the output 30 and end welcome to the java tricky question challenge and today's challenge is available in your screen so try to pause the video try to solve this challenge by yourself first after that you can compare your thinking with my explanation and that is the best way to learn by correcting your mistakes so in this question first of all we have to check will this code compile if yes what will be the output so first of all let's try to check for the compilation error so here we have one main method and inside the main method we are initializing the array with the three value so after execution of this line in the memory we have one array which has a three value uh, 12 17 and 43 so 12 will be at index 0 17 it's a 1 and 43 it's a index 2 after that inside the try block we are trying to access the value of array at the position number 2 so position number 2 we have a 43 so here it will print 43 but after the try block we don't have a catch block so will it give compilation error so can we ignore the catch block after the try block we are writing the finally block directly so can we have a try block without catch block so yes this is the valid syntax we can ignore the catch block if we have a finally block so here it will print 43 and finally block will get executed whether we are getting the exception or not so finally it will print end so output of this program it's a 43 and end and if you look at the definition of finally block in google you will get the idea java finally block follows the try or catch block that means finally block can follow the try block that means we can ignore the catch block as well perfect so i hope you are clear what is the output of this question so output for this question will be 43 and